once again, thank you for joining us for today's uh, Alumni Fireside Chat with uh, our guest, uh, Mr. Marcus Wu. So um, Marcus is our very own CHK MBA alumnus, uh, who is now working as a senior VP at uh, Invest Hong Kong. And, and it's a pleasure to have you here uh, online today, uh, Marcus. So again, uh, apologies for the delay, and um, and for and for today's session, um, we will start off with a short overview of CHK MBA program, uh, for about ten minutes. Then we'll move on to the alumni, uh, fireside chat with Marcus, and uh, and, and and followed by a Q and A session with the audiences uh, live here today. So once again, uh, let me in quickly in introduce myself. Uh, my name is Albert. I'm the representative of uh, um, for for the for the marketing and admissions team here at CHK MBA uh, office, and I myself I handle applications from all over the world except mainland China. So um, I understand that among our audiences, um, we have audiences coming from different parts of the world. So uh, you'll be thinking, you know, why sh we should consider Hong Kong as the study location or place to set up a business here uh, or, or to invest here. So Hong Kong is a world leading financial center and a business hub, and it has one of the most competitive com economies in the world. So its co competitiveness is actually underpinned by its uh, common law system, uh, simple and low tax regime, and a favorable business environment with efficient and transparent market and a world-class infrastructure. And Hong Kong is also home to a diverse range of people and cultures where English language is widely spoken here. Hence, Hong Kong has always been attract uh, an attractive location for international investors um, to set up their regional base here to gain access um, to the mainland market. As for those who are looking to come here from overseas to pursue their MBA, um, most of the non-local graduates are eligible to, to apply for the post-study work visa that's known as the IMG visa uh, after finishing their full-time studies. And that actually allows them to remain in Hong Kong to find work and work here for at least two years. So it is the mission of our business school to continue pioneering the development of global leaders and equip them to meet the challenges and opportunities of the Asian century. So this is achieved by providing the environment that fosters self-discovery, character building, knowledge creation, sharing, and application. So in order to fulfill this mission, our MBA program is strategically positioned with three key hallmarks, namely global academic excellence, leap with BIM and Asian century focus with nine key blocks outlined here to address them, where you'll be able to learn business where business is. So this is our CHK MBA full-time curriculum where our full-time students would complete one year of their studies with us and these are the different subjects, core, core modules and electives, um, which requires our students to, to complete a total of 51, 51 credit units. Then we do have the part-time program, which lasts for two years, where students would attend classes every Saturday at our main, at our Shatin campus. And we do have this, a total of six optional concentrations for our students to tailor their MBA journey for career acceleration and building their expertise in a specific area. And there are also different study options for our students to extend their studies with us, namely through the JD MBA program, dual MBA degree, the MBA plus, and the international exchange program. So among all the MBA programs in Hong Kong, CUHK MBA is the only one that offers its full-time students 
an on-campus accommodation option that has easy access to different facilities, such as library, gym, canteen and MTR station, and at, and, and at an affordable rate. And on top of that, CHK has the largest, greenest, and most sustainably designed campus in Hong Kong, which, can, which offers our students the chance to immerse, them, immerse themselves fully as a full-time student once again. And our CHK main campus is strategically, strategically located next to the university MTR station, while CHK Business School is only three minutes walk away from the station. So that really offers that convenience of traveling to different parts of Hong Kong. Moreover, Emirati, the CBD of Hong Kong, and Luo and Lok Ma Chao, border of Shenzhen mainland China, are conveniently located on the same railway line as the university MTR station, offering our students a comfortable travel experience when making trips for networking events or lessons, for example. Um, this is the exterior of CHK Business School, also known as CYT Building, consisting of 15 floors with state-of-the-art facilities and modern, uh, modern architecture. And this is the foyer of our business school. And we also have a town campus actually located in the Admiralty with elective classes taught during the weekday evenings to cater to the tight schedule of our part-time students as they attend classes. Uh, after they finish work. Then it comes to the admissions requirements for uh, 2025 intake. So there are a couple of requirements that you need, you need to fulfill uh, when you apply to us. First, you need to have a recognized bachelor's degree and a minimum two years of full-time postgraduate work experience by matriculate, matriculation. And a minimum of English requirement, there's a score of 6.5 for IELTS. 79 for TOEFL, or if you have done your GMAT for the previous version, it will be 21 for verbal, and for the latest edition, it will be band 78 for verbal. And of course, we do give exemptions to applicants who graduated from local university, or applicants who can actually provide documents that states that English as a medium of instruction. And, and also, there's a latest update to our admissions requirement for the GMAT or GRD. So GMAT or GRD score is not mandatory anymore, but still a good score would be able to strengthen your applications to us. And lastly, we we'll, would we'll require at least two references from your referees. And we also, and as for the tuition fee and scholarship opportunities, these are the latest updates to our fee. So for full-time MBA is at 605,000 Hong Kong dollars, which is basically the same as um, our this year intake. As for part-time, um, we have an increase in our tuition fee to 490,000 Hong Kong dollars. Uh, and we do offer scholarships to outstanding applicants who are able to demonstrate uh, strong career progression or excellent academic uh, achievements in, from the, in the past. So we would assess um, your scholarship uh, uh, opportunity based on your um, academic achievements, GMAT, um, interview performances, as well as your potential contributions to the cohort. And if you are somehow associated with CHK, so for example, if you are alumni uh, from CHK or you are being referred by our business school uh, uh, alumni, then um, if you are to be accepted, then there will be a grant of 15,000 Hong Kong dollars um, to be discounted from a tuition fee if your application is successful. So that's pretty much from me uh, for an for for basic, for, uh, basic inter uh, overview of our CHK MBA program. And uh, certainly do connect with us um, through our social media channels such as LinkedIn, as we are very active on that. So um, coming to the highlight of our uh, today, tonight's event. So um, I'm very delighted to welcome about, um, our very own um, CHK MBA alumnus, Mr. Marcus Wu, among us today to share his over outlook of um, Hong Kong status, uh, 
and the evolving digital leadership of Hong Kong as a global business hub. So um, let me just do a quick introduction of Marcus' background. So Marcus is currently um, the SVP of uh, the IC ICT division at Invest Hong Kong, uh, a Hong Kong government agency responsible for facilitating foreign direct investment into the city. Uh, he brings a wealth of experience, uh, having accumulated over 18 years of professional work experience. And prior, prior to his current role, Marcus held the position of Director of International Business at Telstra, PBS, a telecommunications solutions provider that serves thousands of businesses, uh, governments, carriers, and over-the-top customers globally. In addition to his extensive work experience, Marcus pursued his part-time MBA with us at CHKI Business School, where, which he com completed in 2022. So thank you for joining us this evening, Marcus. Thank you. Yep. So given the diverse backgrounds of our audiences, which includes working professionals from various regions and industries, uh, it would be helpful to provide a brief introduction to your role and the key priorities you are responsible for at Invest Hong Kong. Um, this overview would be particularly useful for, the, for those who might not be familiar with Invest Hong Kong and your role with them. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you, uh, Albert. Invest Hong Kong is a government, government body to attract and to retain the foreign direct investment to Hong Kong. So we help um, um, the enterprises, foreign enterprises and, and FDI uh, on boarding to Hong Kong and we, we try to facilitate um, um, their, their ongoing process and journey uh, for their entire business journey. Uh, throughout throughout this city. So um, maybe I, I could introduce a bit uh, about Hong Kong advantages and some of the background because I see uh, there are quite an extensive audience that are that are uh, from out of Hong Kong. So maybe I'm I, I'll give a, a little bit of overview of uh, Hong Kong's advantage and and thank you Albert for for letting me give giving a sales pitch. Uh, of, of <laughs> Hong Kong as an international city. So uh, yes, Hong Kong is a world international city. It consists of a uh, free economy and of course, global business community. As of 2023, uh, over 9,000 of companies with parents uh, outside of Hong Kong and over 1,300 are belonging to the regional headquarters. And uh, the major lines of business of these FDIs are mainly import and export trade, uh, wholesale and retail, uh, finance and banking, professional services and education services, uh, transportation and logistics, storage and courier services. And of course, uh, my view, uh, information and communications technology. Hong Kong has a very distinctive state status and advantages of Hong Kong under one country, two system. We maintain our own currency, our own political and legal system. And it's only place in the world with global advantages together with the China advantages uh, converge in one place. As an international financial shipping and trading center, uh, we have a very stable currency picked to US dollars, free flow of capital and services, goods, uh, largest offshore Chinese yen uh, business hub uh, and no no taxes on, on import and export of goods. Um, we also have a free, open, regulated uh, business environment under the common laws and legal system. Uh, recently, we have uh, a new international arbitration center being placed in Hong Kong, uh, as well as strong intellectual property protection. And of course, uh, Albert has mentioned uh, in his slides, simple and low tax system. Uh, one thing about education, um, according to the latest QS ranking, Hong Kong has a total of eight um, government subsidized uh, universities. And out of five of them are in um, the top 100, which means uh, Hong Kong has a, uh, an extensive uh, uh, intellectual environment and educational environment, uh, in particular to the higher education. And of course, uh, CUHK is uh, one of the top uh, uh, among these eight. 
um, and and we are we we are actually a, a a very strong place in terms of education, and of course the output of these educations will be uh, the graduates, uh, all the intellectuals uh, of um, which helps to to make uh, our, our city and economy better. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Marcus. Um, as for yourself, um, you know, could, could you provide I guess, an example of an initiative that you have led or uh, been involved with in your division that actually aim at uh, enhancing Hong Kong's competitive competitiveness and appeal for foreign businesses? Mm. Invest Hong Kong is uh, a key business stakeholder to any of the foreign enterprises or entrepreneurs uh, along their business journey. We help the company or entrepreneurs putting the dots together. Before a company making any strategic plan or investments, Invest Hong Kong provide advisory services uh, on in terms of uh, market entrance strategies, market environments, as well as uh, arranging delegation visits to Hong Kong to explore the potential market. Once company ha has made up their mind, we implement uh, the plan together with enterprises hand in hand. Uh, from the basics, company incorporations, bank account openings, up to, to the uh, go-to-market plan, introduction to the business partners, networking opportunities, as well as the PR support. Invest Hong Kong also provide ongoing other care services uh, subject to company's business objective. For instance, quite a number of uh, our expansion projects are uh, additional and added investment from our existing enterprises uh, based in Hong Kong. Typically, uh, adding business functions such as uh, research and development, operation centers, uh, um, and, and all, all along uh, others. The service scope and care to enterprises, uh, including our global footprint to support, uh, are indeed uh, appealing to many of the foreign enterprises and entrepreneurs. Hmm. Good to know. And, uh, you know, experience, what do you see as the biggest challenges or pain points that foreign businesses face uh, when operating in or expanding uh, to Hong Kong? And uh, how will you go about addressing those issues um, to make Hong Kong a more attractive and viable location for them? Uh, quite a, a number of uh, enterprises are, are indeed at at the exploration stage, at the very first beginning, when we uh, try to do the, um, um, we, we have our agencies and our own uh, global team to do all types of uh, events and, and attractions, uh, delegation visits. Uh, but many of the enterprises are, are still at the at exploration stage. So I, I observe quite a number of en entrepreneurs uh, sometimes are unprepared. For their business so to better facilitate we, we generally will provide um, more market information uh, as well as our government policy and incentive programs um, um, and and also the market landscape to to encourage them to visit and stay in hong kong for a longer of time to do their reports and homeworks and uh, along the line we also provide uh, a more extensive uh, um, support to, to these enterprises, including the industry events, the delegation visits, and sometimes uh, the visit um, of, of the organizations. So for me, um, um, I, I, I continue continuously holding quite an extensive visit uh, for these, uh, with these enterprises to Hong Kong Science and Technology Park, which is next to CUHK, yeah. uh, Cyberport, as well as others. Mm. Yeah, that that definitely sounds a lot. Uh, that's a lot of support from the government, um, to help the foreign businesses to, uh, thrive in the you know in, as a regional, um, headquarter here in Hong Kong. And of course, um, based on your expertise, um, what are some of the major technology trends and innovations you're currently observing, uh, that are shaping Hong Kong's business landscape? and helping to attract global investment into the city? Um, there are 
three major pillars uh, from what I observed. The, recently, the green technology, uh, including construction and property technology, artificial intelligence, and financial technology, such as payment, web free, and blockchain. Uh, well, the market adoption is relatively left behind uh, compared to many of the markets, including the mainland markets. Uh, yeah. Hong Kong SAR government has been putting uh, extra effort and policy in these three areas to facilitate and to build up the ecosystem. For instance, the funding to the cyberport recently uh, to build up the AI supercomputing centers in northern mm -hmm. metropolitan area, uh, as well as extra 300 million of subsidies uh, to encourage enterprise on the AI adoptions. Uh, and, and together with uh, another 1 billion Hong Kong dollars of uh, prop tech and construction INT funds uh, through the Construction Industry Council. These are all sorts of examples that we, we try to put in more policy um, into these three pillars. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, thank you for sharing those insightful perspectives on, on your work in uh, at Events Hong Kong and the successes that you have in attracting and retaining um, mainland Chinese and foreign companies based in Hong Kong. Um, uh, so among our audiences this evening, so uh, which includes recent CHK MBA alumni, current students and prospective applicants, uh, they would also be interested to hear more about your career journey since graduating from the CHK MBA program, uh, as well as your first-hand experiences and reflections on your own MBA studies. Uh, so can you share, um, you know, what would you consider that would be the most impactful and transformative aspects of your MBA education uh, since graduating from CHK? Mm. Well, thank you, Albert. Um, again, there are really quite a number of components that impact me in the course of my MBA journey. Um, academic excellence will be definitely the most impactful one. Um, um, we're, well, since my my undergrad undergrad education, I, I don't receive much proper um um business education, I would say, related to to the business management. So uh CUHK MBA actually provide me a, a, a very good framework. Um and 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 uh, also the, the skill set and knowledge to help me overcome my work working context. Um and and in, in particular to um, the, the, the coursework that I've been encountered, uh, aside from the, the core uh, business, um, uh, business classes, um, financial planning, um, um, leadership skills, that there are really more uh, electives that, um, that actually put, uh, put me into a, a better shape uh, to provide me a little bit more knowledge uh for for my current work uh i i in that time i remember there are quite uh, there are two or three major um um uh, major uh, um stream selection that you can yeah. choose so i actually choose innovation and technology uh and and the electives actually empower me uh in those days not 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 really helping my 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 work of those days but but really helping my current work actually uh yeah. classes such as family business uh innovation and technology uh fintech management consulting uh and also applied entrepreneurship uh actually provide a, a very hands-on um education and knowledge for for my daily work i i i actually utilize these skills to help the new entrepreneurs onboarding to hong kong yeah. uh uh, giving them some guidance on on how uh, the the general steps of getting fundings uh, or uh, engaging VCs will will be looking like. I think these are all hands on knowledge that I acquire in my MBA journey. Yeah, that's certainly um, a, a very impactful um, uh, um, sort of experience on your current work. So it's to actually prepare you for the future. Uh, through the course of studies. Um, and of course, over the course of your distinguished career, uh, what would you say that have been some of the biggest challenges you have faced and how have you navigated through those challenges uh, successfully? Mm. 
Uh, the biggest challenge I face in my work is, is not actually the work itself. Uh, mm. Generally, after studying the MBA, uh, I, I'm pretty confident most of uh, the, the, the undergraduates or, or, or the MBA graduates will, will easily to master their, their work. Um, um, but but the, 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 the biggest challenge actually I face is uh, finding the true value of why I'm working in, in, in certain organizations. In, in my previous role as, as a director uh, in, in a commercial firm, um, well, I, I help my business to, to, to get to earn further earnings, to, to find new revenue stream. But the fact is I'm not satisfied. Um, mm -hmm. I've been searching really the values of my work and career for a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and and good thing is uh, not, not until... I found my mentors in my MBA journey. He actually provide me some guidance and and what the true meaning of work is, uh, mm -hmm. and also the approaches and how uh, I should view in in each job. So I'm I'm so glad uh, I got a good mentor. And yeah. right after the MBA graduation, I I I I'm able to to switch my career from a commercial firm to to a government role, uh, a role that I can contribute a bit more back to to my hometown and, and to the society so where it's all where my passion has lately currently oh yeah it's good to hear and and you yourself is currently uh the lead advisor uh, for our mba students so as it's, it's like passing up passing on the, the torch uh you know from from sort of uh one generation to another so as to speak so um and of course you know uh the professional networking opportunities, uh, uh, it you know is is there as an MBA student. So, based on your insights, um, what kind of concrete strategies would you recommend um, current student as well as future future uh, MBA students to build uh, meaningful relationships and connections, and to effectively leverage on their professional network? Mm. So um, I, I think there are really uh, an extensive uh, courses available in, in terms of MBA. There, there are really many choices available there. But uh, one of the key value that I got from CUHK, uh, from, from this MBA journey, is actually the mentorship. Uh, that the people that I met are, well, not, not just uh, intelligent, but uh, yeah. uh, it's insightful. Uh, CHK is one of the oldest uh, MBA uh, program uh, in, in Hong Kong. So uh, the accumulation of the alumni, uh, they are all uh, very senior executives uh, in, in yeah. Hong Kong. Uh, as long as you, 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 you like to uh, network with them, uh, you, you, you should be able to, to spot out and, and have a coffee chat with them. So... Uh, mentorship is is actually uh, one of the, the the most concrete and valuable uh, component. But the, the other the other thing was definitely a professional networking opportunity. So uh, CHK on and on. Um, um, I, I when I first and the entire MB, MBA journey, uh, uh, for, to me, uh, it's entirely under COVID. So oh, yeah, um, sure. there are uh, 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 full of the social restrictions that prevent um, that prevent us on on meeting the people face to face. But despite the hardship, uh, the the offices actually help a lot on on uh, doing all the mingling and 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 the networking uh, opportunities. I I remember even yeah. we are all wearing the mask. They are trying to to organize the the leadership seminar. Uh, as with a small focus group, uh, uh, there is where I, I met my my some of my mentors and and some of the new professional network. And I remember one of the um the, the person that 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 has shared it, her her, uh, her 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 business journey back then now becomes my collaborator of Hong Kong Science and Technology oh, Prime. Wow. So uh, uh, I, I think uh, you never know. So uh, people you met. In these networking opportunities, actually, uh, could could be playing a, a critical role in your future's career journey. Yeah, excellent sharing. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, finally, what was the single most important piece of advice that um, you would offer to 
uh, current or prospective MBA students who are interested in pursuing or advancing in a career path similar to yours? Um, do what you are passionate about and be curious and humble to learn about new subjects. Uh, I think this could apply uh, uh, not, not just to... Uh, well, of course, I understand uh, uh, joining the MBA uh, many of uh, the people is uh, at, at least uh, in in those days. My wish list is after joining the MBA. What's my increment of the annual salary? That that's uh, yeah. also uh, yeah. one of genders in in those days. But uh, I I think at the end, um, um, you know, we 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 try to uh, learn and and we we try we try to get a, a bit more content and, and knowledge from all all these journey. So uh, be passionate or, uh, on, on doing what you are. So uh, say if, if you, you like to consider um, uh, uh, going through the startup journey, uh, be an entrepreneurship, you, you have to be really passionate of what you are doing. So even you are joining the MBA, I, I would say uh, be passionate of, of what you are learning and, and try, try to be curious and, and humble to learn about new subjects. So uh, I still recall one professor uh, saying, uh would other people still remember you uh and, and willing to engage with you uh after you no longer have the name card and titles on so this is the motto that i keep telling myself every day to 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 do something better uh to others and and be passionate of what i'm doing yeah that's certainly very insightful yeah all right uh thanks for sharing all these um insightful perspectives and um and I, I realized that we actually uh, finished our um, sharing session earlier than expected. Uh, but that means that we leave more time for the Q&A session uh, for our uh, prospects or current students uh, you know, who are with us uh, to ask any questions um, to, to myself or to Marcus. Um, so yeah, feel free to do so. Francis, maybe you might have the question. So uh, you can actually shoot us some questions if you like. If not, Doris. Yeah, don't be shy. Just feel free to ask any questions to us uh, if you have any. If not, I'll just go to the chat box and uh, and check any if there's any questions on there. Um. <clears throat> So, uh, so Syed asks that if you need someone to assist you to apply for masters or MBA. Yep. So, um, <clears throat> well, to apply to our MBA program, all you need to do is just go onto our application portal. So first, uh, re register an account on the application portal. Uh, then go on to fill in the answers to your questions, uh, as well as filling in your uh your personal statement, essays to your questions, and then upload the documents that's required. Uh, then go on to submit your applications uh, to us. So it's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, as for the application process itself, so after which, uh, after after that you uh, have submitted your application, um, uh, you, uh, I, would f I would first arrange um, the admissions interview for you. That's the first interview. So basically for our uh, admissions director to uh, understand a bit more about your profile. Uh, and if you manage to pass the first interview, uh, then I would uh, then arrange the second interview for you, which is the selection interview, uh, which will be held with our professors uh, for them to actually learn more about your line of work uh, and to understand, um, you know, what whether you are a good match with our MBA program. 
And if you do, then um, fantastic. You would then receive uh, an offer from us uh, and potentially a scholarship um, if you have done well throughout the whole ap uh, application process. Um, so then you can then decide on uh, whether uh, you would like to join us or not uh, through paying a deposit, which is part of the tuition fee. So that's basically the basic uh, process of uh, uh, applying to us. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. Well, okay. That's all right, Doris. No worries. Um, yep, Francis. Um, it's got a question. So um, <clears throat> that's that would be for Marcus. Uh, what changes have you noticed moving from a commercial environment uh, to government? Uh, is it more bureaucratic or is it easier to get things done with strong supporters? Thank you, Francis. Um, so it is, it's, un, it's uneasy, I would say, uh, changing from a commercial environment to government. Um, in, in particular, uh, when uh, in, in, in the commercial world, it's all about the efficiency, uh, the profits, um, and, and things are, are actually moving very fast, especially I, I, I used to be in the telecom and, and, and tech sector. Uh, but but going to the government, uh, there are certain process we, we need to be taking care of uh, the internal processes. But I, I, I won't say uh, it is bureaucratic. Um, um, the, the, at least the folks that I have been working with within Invest Hong Kong, um, uh, probably a, a quite an extensive number of people are, are used to work in the commercial world. So uh, uh, it, it's extremely collaborative and and we, we try to work together uh, with our global team, our global consultants, um, in order to um, onboard the foreign enterprises in Hong Kong. So uh, I, I would say um, um, it's another challenge on, on working on, on the government side, uh, but it's, 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 uh, it, it actually make, makes it more meaningful because the, the entire angle uh, has been changed uh, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, uh, my working experience. It's no longer about uh, profit and loss, but it's about uh, how we would bring in uh, further enterprises to grow the ecosystem, uh, how we, we help the, um, the, uh, the city on, on uh, going through the uh, digitizations, transformations and, and changes. Right. Okay. Um, and next question would be that, uh, yeah, will the applicant have the chance to get a full scholarship? And what is the GMAT or GRE score for a chance to get a full scholarship? Well, um, to be honest, um, it is very rare that we, offer, we, we, we provide a full scholarship. Uh, and in fact, uh, for this year, intake, we 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 don't we we haven't awarded a uh, full scholarship to to anyone because it really takes um, you know a very strong interview performance um, plus uh, you know getting a high score um, you know for example for your for your GPA and pass as well as a strong career track. Um, but still, yeah, we certainly do have the scholarship pot. Uh, available, available, and uh, and of course, you know, the earlier you apply, the higher chance that it is possible that you can uh, gain a higher uh, scholarship award. Uh, given the fact that you are one of the uh, sort of early applicant um, among among all the applicants uh, applying to us, so uh, definitely, I would uh, encourage um, put, uh, prospects to apply as early as possible. Um, so that your application would be prioritized, uh, and that uh, you know you will be, um, you know, one of the first applying to us, and that would uh, put you into a better position uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, getting a higher scholarship uh, from uh, from the admissions committee. And to Marcus, um, what was the most challenging part of the course for you? 
financial management, definitely. All, <laughs> all those uh, crazy ratios, uh, the IRR, all, 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 all those uh, crazy calculations. But um, I, I managed to, the good thing is uh, uh, in, in the MBA, uh, th there are certain standards that we need to fulfill. But uh, um, uh, the, the good 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 thing is or, or the the, the uh, key learnings uh, of of these uh, uh, facing the hard time is to to seek your your peers assistance um, mm -hmm. and and because that there, there are certainly there are people who are really good at that uh, so working with them as a group mate or, or collaborate with the with the team would be most beneficial um so uh, as as a result i i get a quite a good result actually in, in that class uh because uh really quite a number of uh, teammates actually helping me out so um yeah so 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 that's the case yeah the the so I, I totally agree with you uh, marcus that peer support system uh you know is really important uh, where our students with different skill sets um, would complement each another. And when working in a team, uh, that actually uh, helps a lot in, 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 you know, perform uh, in putting in uh, a high, um, you know, a high performance, uh, especially in a group project where everyone's uh, uniqueness and skill set comes into, into place. And, uh, and yeah, basically everyone learning from each other. And uh, question from Jonathan, will CHK follow the footsteps of HKUSD to offer a full digital MBA? Um, so, um, you know, for, for as an M MBA, a CHK MBA office, um, we emphasize a lot on student experience. Uh, and of course, you know, the in-person experience is, you know, what we view is irreplaceable, of course, except during the time of COVID where, you know, um, there's a lot of inevitables. Um, but, you know, when, when, when things return to normal, um, we emphasize a lot on um, the overall uh, learning experience face-to-face. -face. And, and that, that really sort of, um, uh, create a different um, learning experience where you know you, you get to meet um, your classmates face to face um, our professors and then to go into uh, the classes um, and to you know discuss about, about a certain case for example uh, uh, in person within the classroom and 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 everyone would have a sort of a direct interaction among each another where everyone would put in their own arguments and and to put in their own propositions in there uh, for everyone to discuss. Um, so so the whole experience is very much different in person than an online experience, I would say. Um, and, and yeah, so so that's what we actually emphasize on right now. Uh, that is to um, only um, to offer a full-time, and a part-time in-person MBA program, um, and of course, you know, solely for for full-time one class and part-time one class, unlike uh, the rest of the MBA programs out out there in Hong Kong. And from Jess, um, hi Marcus, how would you rank the takeaways from the CU MBA program? For example, first network and sec second management skill set, etc. Mm. Um, I, I would put again uh, the three pillars that, that I mentioned uh, academic excellence uh, mentorship as well as the professional networking uh, networking opportunities the, the, the top one will definitely uh, be the mentorship because I, I, I'm able to meet a good mentor uh, not, not helping me to step up and and, and and giving me more earnings, but uh, m making me uh, understand what the career should be focusing on. Uh, what's the true value of uh, working uh, as a you know as, as in your career? 
um, in in particular to uh, um, he 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 have been saying a, a very good um, example. So money again is the by byproduct of what you are doing. So uh, managing your uh, relationships, your professional relationships, uh, together with um, um, you know the the uh, stuff that you are passionate on doing about is is most crucial. So that that simple words, uh, a, a simple one or two minute words, uh, actually uh, change my 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 course of career from time to time because uh, when I engage with this uh, mentor, I. Uh, I, I'm not. You know, I, I spent quite, quite a few engagements back and forth with him. So, uh, and and he's willing to take it because imagine he is a very busy. He is a very busy executive, and yeah. and um and and he's also a book writer as well. So, uh, a very busy, but but he's willing to to meet and to guide me on all these um uh conversations, and. Um, I, I think mentorship is is the most uh, most um, contributable factor uh, to my MBA journey. Mm. Yeah, so say so say really, especially uh, we we actually just organized a, a unique program within our MBA uh, uh, program that is the a elite mentorship program where our our, our current students actually. Uh, get connected with our alumni face to face, and and to actually have a have a good conversation to, you know, uh, to pair up with each another based on our students' future career goal. Uh, so that our our uh, our alumni senior uh, you know alumni who are working in senior positions are able to offer their personalized um, uh, sort of leadership advice. To our students, uh, for them to learn directly from um, these mentors. So this is actually a very unique program that's um, uh, offered within our MBA program. And um, and a question from Doris: um, Is Ling Yi University recognized um, by CUHK? So um, <clears throat> well, as long as your degree is an accredited one. And it's it is a legitimate university, um. So yeah, that wouldn't be an issue. So as long as your degree is a at least you have a, as long as you have a bachelor's degree at least, then um you will certainly uh be considered um to you know to to apply to us. And we have a question from Mayuko. Uh, thank you for sharing your experiences, Marcus. Um, I have two questions. Uh, uh, can you share your memorable class of entrepreneurship? And what did you experience um, during the extracurricular activities at CHK? Mm. The most memorable class uh, of entrepreneurship is it's definitely applied entrepreneurship. It's a, a it's a very unique class that CUHK has been offered in past uh, I think ten years. Uh, the the unique uh thing is um um it's actually a real project, uh, a real entrepreneurial project, but he it, it's failed. It's, it's entirely failed. Uh, in in the in 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 the actual commercialization. So. We help uh, the entrepreneurs to redesign and remodelize uh, and recommercialize the entire business model, and where they 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 uh, try to focus uh, on on their own technology, uh, our team will do the commercialization. And at the end of the class, is 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 not a very long class. It's is an, uh, another two three months classes, uh, but the final. Uh, the final proposal, the final project is the actual pitching to the real VC. So the uh, the instructor has uh, invited uh, uh, a, a, v, a, a VC bot um, yeah. who who actually grade your your remodelization of 
of of the pitching. You you got only ten minutes, and and your team have to do the 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 remodelization and recommercialization. Um, and 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 this is a very unique class because it's it's not only the knowledge and it's the actual the real time experience for an entrepreneur to pitch the VC. And um, for for the second question, uh. Because I, I, my, my course of study is falling fully under the, the COVID. It's, it's the entire lockdown uh, of, of the, um, of, of the uh, social engagement. So uh, it's, it's relatively limited. But, but despite the fact the school has been trying to set us up with certain local visits. I remember I, I visited uh, Hong Kong Science and Technology Park. Uh, as well as a few other visits to to the organizations and companies, of course within within Hong Kong only. There's there's no no longer there there there's no business trip for my cohort, but uh, uh I think those kind of experience actually contribute uh my 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 extra yeah. knowledge uh in 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 terms of uh um my 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 understanding. So uh, especially I, I'm focusing in tech uh, and, and innovation. So visiting uh, STP is, is definitely a, a very good um, a, a, a very good context. And I remember I engaged the, the, the CEO. Uh, they, they have invited the CEO of the Science Park uh, in, in, in quite a number of um, occasions. Uh, and, and I'm able to, to actually connect and, and mingle with him. So uh, I think that that's the the um, the fun part, despite the fact I, I'm fully under the, the the COVID lockdown. I see, I see. Yeah, uh, likewise, our current student actually we got a chance to um, uh, come into face to face contact with um, the CEO of HKSTP, uh, Albert Wong, uh, during the orientation and preterm. So um, again, yeah, um, it's a it's a um, uh, unique experience for students to, you know, come into contact directly with uh, the senior <clears throat> alumni of ours. <coughs> and <clears throat> a question from Mokking. Thank you for sharing. Uh, may I know how active the alumni network is and what opportunities does it provide for current students? Okay, um, so there, there are really uh, quite a number of, of, um, of, of groups. So uh, for, for alumni, we, we have an alumni associations, of course, and we have also inter-school alumni associations uh, who provide uh, an extensive uh, networking opportunities. Uh, I remember last month I've joined uh, Adina and I, I've engaged with way new different uh, Groups of people through, through the networking, the, the uh, sake testing, uh, tasting event. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, uh, uh, it, it, I, I would say, uh, to me, is is quite, quite active. But, uh, it, uh, again, it, it all really de uh, depends on how you, you carry on the, the, the engagement. So, um, um, in, I, I remember in my cohort that there, there are really sometimes I, I hear uh, uh, some complaints uh, about the 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 alumni network, the networking opportunities. But again, I, I think at the end is is how how proactive you you go and join the event and how you you continue your discussion and engagement with particular folks of people. Uh, I think that also not just applying the the CUHK uh, alumni network that applies the 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 daily life of Hong Kong is is really easy for you to to network uh, with with anyone uh, uh, and any high rank officials or or high rank uh, uh, executives uh, in Hong Kong I, I think it's is easy is relatively easy to get engaged and, and put your name card to them. Uh, I, I think more important is uh, how to get them remember you because we, we know all these high rank officials and executives, but how could uh, we impress these executives and, and let them to remember you? I, I, I think 
that that's another questions uh, we we need uh, we we probably need to work work very hard on. Um, so my 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 answer is yes. Uh, there there are really lots of alumni network, and also I remember uh, I was an MBA student. That there are also uh, uh, many competitions that that can be involved. There's the ESG groups that that uh, go into the ESG competition. Um, uh, and, and there are really many, many other subgroups that, that you could engage in. Yeah, indeed. Um, you know, all these competition actually serves um, a great opportunity opportunity to network uh, with, you know, another business school students as well as, you know, organizing schools. So once again, you know, it's, uh, it's another, pla another uh, opportunity to get to know new people um, who might be able to influence um, your career. <clears throat> um, I, I noticed that uh, we are quite tight on the time, but of course, because of the de delay, um, I'm, um, how about if we probably extend for five to 10 minutes, Marcus, is that fine to answer more questions from our audiences? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I shall. I I just pick um probably three questions uh, from the chat box that are most relevant um you know to Marcus' experience. Um, so we have a question from Tyler. Um, thank you, Marcus. Um, would you have any advice on how to make the most out of the MBA program to best set ourselves up for future success? Mm. Um, that that's a a a really good question, Taylor. Um. So uh, I, I think it, it would be uh, really uh, good to craft out what, what's your objective of, of your ultimate object, objective. Okay, so, so uh, in, in, in a more quantitative terms, because, uh, you know, uh, when, when I was really, really young, I, I, I can still remember, I, I craft out uh, a goal that I, I want to be a millionaire. Um, so, so uh, the, the question is how, right? Uh, if, if you want to be a millionaire, why you need that so 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 much money on, on that? What, what's the purpose or objective? So once you, you craft out um, uh, your, your objective, your quantitative of objective, um, um, I, I think MB, uh, MBA program will be able to help. Say if, if I like to be uh, 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 to, to enroll as a uh, as a CEO of, of a company, um, so um, MBA will be able to provide me relevant network and mentorship, as well as um, um, the framework and and the study to prepare you for for the future's leadership. Um, so if uh, once you understand this 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 uh, core core component, you 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 will probably spend lots of your time on on studying and um, participating in, in in many of the uh, uh, workshops to, to connect with the executives and, and also mentorship so um, um, I, I think uh, it, it would be beneficial if you could craft out um, um, an, an ultimate object objective uh, and and see how MBA could could utilize uh, uh once you enroll in 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 the courses yeah um and how do you balance work family and study during your mba studies ah uh, uh compromise um so uh it's it's um it's it's always juggling um uh, you, you, when, when you need to take care, um, um, the study, there are lots of meetings, uh, group discussion, um, but the, 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 well, the good or bad, good, good thing, uh, about the COVID is, uh, many of, uh, the occasions are, are Zoom. So I, I can actually do all the studies and, and, um, and, and meetings and activities at home while I, I, well, once I, I, I complete all these uh, Zoom meetings, I, I can resume my work and, and also my family life. Um, but uh, yes, it's, it's always a, a, 
uh, juggling around uh, uh, between this. Um, um, but but uh, at the end, it's, it's only two years, and um, you, you you probably want to compromise uh, some of the study time. Uh, I mean, some of the, the family time and work time with the study. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for sharing, um, Marcus. And and that that actually answers part of the question from Heidi. Um, uh, another part of the question would be, what actually motivated you to take um, the MBA program from CHK? Um, the motivations. Um, well, the 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 fact is that uh, in, in uh, in, in those days, my my objective is is um, is to get promoted, and is is uh, to be one of the C level in 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 my organizations. So I take up a, a very bold step to to study an MBA, uh, in order to get a promotions. Um, but interestingly, after all these uh, completed studies, uh, my goal has changed, because of uh, my my engagements and and my life. Uh, journey uh, with with my mentors that I met in in CHK MBA so um so in, in those days the motivations is promotions um and of course the uh, the, the salary increment but uh but uh in, interestingly it changes mm. yeah um you know from from time to time um you know, the the MBA experience uh will influence uh, your sort of original goal that you set up uh, before you do pursue your MBA, and that's actually um <clears throat> very relatable to my my own as well, uh, which will be another story for another time, <laughs> um, and I'll just um go go to the last question for 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 tonight's uh, event, um so from Hatando um. How the role of business accelerators or incubators facility plays in shaping CUHK graduates to be entrepreneurs in the digital future? Mm. Um, yeah, may maybe I can share a bit of my experience. Uh, okay, so so uh, first of all, um, uh, uh, CHK is an academy. Um, it's an educational academy, but it it actually nurture um. Um, um, the the graduates uh to become an entrepreneurs, so they have uh, a particular streams on innovation and technology to provide uh a necessary training to to provide uh, the soft skills and knowledge to the graduates so that they can become entrepreneur. But uh, once you you got all these soft skills being set, um, that the person uh. Uh, ha has the ability and soft skills to go on his uh, entrepreneurial journey. Um, and, and in Hong Kong, there are lots of uh, incubators and acceler accelerators program available. Uh, some of them are government-based. So the science and technology part, the cyber part, they have the incubation programs as well as the private ones. So uh, uh, more important is uh, uh, for, for CHK at least uh, is to nurture and to train up um, these people with necessary skills uh, to craft out the entrepreneurs uh, in, in the digital future. Hmm. Yeah, um, certainly CHK um, MBA program has always um, you know, been, been the, uh, the strength actually lies within uh, in entrepreneurship and innovation. And that's the exactly the kind of mindset that we hope to cultivate in our students um, to prepare them um, for uh, you know for you know for the practical experience that we offer as well as the access to the resources and network uh, embedded within the program itself um, so that you know um, our graduates will be uh, you know ready or be future proof um, for the upcoming trends happening within uh, the commercial world um so that's pretty much uh from from us um so thank you so much all for attending um 
tonight's event. And definitely, thank you so much, Marcus, for uh, you know going through going through your own personal MBA journey as well as explaining uh, the outlook of Hong Kong as a global global business hub for foreign investors to uh, you know looking to invest in Hong Kong. Um, again, apologies for the technical delay. Uh, I wish that I could actually appear on the camera, but uh, yeah, this is how, uh, you know, things happen. So, uh, but I hope that the overall experience is great and everyone have the chance to uh, learn a lot directly from uh, Marcus himself. Uh, once again, uh, thank you for joining us tonight and definitely have a good morning, afternoon or evening from where you are from. Thank you. Thank you, Albert. Thank you all.